everyone, we are Group 7 of Grade 12 St. Thomas and before we start, let me just quickly introduce myself. I am Sandra Colleen and Parafina and here are my group mates. I am Simon Peter, I am Malik Dem. I am Roberto Enrique Ocaharon. I am Regidor El Castro. I am Emilio Soriano. Formally beginning our presentation, let's start with Chapter 1, The Problem and Its Background. Our main inspiration is dissatisfaction. People get dissatisfied, people get discontented towards their life. And it is because of certain factors such as when you give something to people and when it is not reciprocated to you, you get dissatisfied because your efforts was not uh, returned back or you didn't earn something that you work hard for. Unhappiness starts, dissatisfied, dissatisfaction starts on that matter. Let's apply dissatisfaction to the job setting to the job setting employees are dissatisfied when they were not able to receive what they want but they would be satisfied if through if they would be compensated well if they would be benefited well if there would be dynamics there would be a healthy relationship towards the employee and the employer between the employee and the employer so if an employee is dissatisfied it can negatively impact not only himself but also the company because an employee would like to receive so much attention so much rewards when he is doing his best and if he is dissatisfied, it means that he is not getting so much attention. He is not properly compensated. And if he is not properly compensated, it will affect it will affect his job performance. And if it affected his job performance, it can create chaos in the dynamics between the employee and the employer in the workplace. That is why it can negatively affect the business. It can also create an influence to others. If an employee negatively affects the employees or his co-workers, they would be able to have this huge dissatisfaction, lack of career development, lack of training opportunities, and unhappy management style. These are the main causes of why Filipino employees are feeling unhappy or dissatisfied towards their job. It is supported by Job Street's survey or report that they conducted, which is the Happiness Index Report 2017. According to the report, five, from 5.25, it dropped to 4.97. That 0.28 number drop is significant because it showed that as years goes by Filipino employees are continuously experiencing dissatisfaction towards their job so although 0.28 is a small number it, we can say that that 0.28 drop is significant Employment satisfaction is very vital and very essential in the workplace. Employees require needs. They require that their needs should be fulfilled so that they would be able to perform the best that they can be. And if these needs are fulfilled, they would be able to have the significant impact to the company because they were able to present their best selves in doing their work. And if they feel so much passion in doing their work, they would be loving their work and their workplace. They would be feeling that satisfaction that requires in every workplace.
Employer-employer relationship is important. It is significant because when they were able to create dynamics or they were able to create that positive relationship, they would be able to bring out the best in each other. They would feel more satisfied. They would be someone who can work with others. They can collaborate together. They can work together positively. And when they work together positively, they can achieve that business success that they are envisioning. Through that goal, they would be able to be motivated. And when they work together, they would be presenting improvements not only to their, their, to their relationship, but also to the status of the company or the business. And if that happened, so it means that their relationship is working out well. As I said a while ago, unhappy management style is one of the main causes of Filipino employees feeling unhappy. Management greatly affects or influences the employees. It's either on their attitude or their performance. Managers are tasked, they are responsible to maintain that at the healthy atmosphere, that positive atmosphere, so that the employees would remain passionate, they would be remaining satisfied towards their job. And if he, the manager sees that there is dissatisfaction and if the employees are not doing well, the managers are responsible to take some action to be adjusting to the conditions that employees want. So management really greatly affects, influences the employees because without the management, without the management, the employees would not be the best versions of themselves. We have actually four guiding theories. First is Frederick Herzberg's two-factor theory of motivation. The second one would be Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Third would be Douglas MacGregor's theory X and theory Y. And lastly would be Kurt Lewin's laissez fair management theory. So these are the theoretical bases that will serve and will guide us in doing the study. So our study took place in Buhawe, Bulacan and specifically we chose three family-owned businesses which are Silvara Spa, Cafe Silvara, and Skill Provider Technological Institute Incorporated owned by the Soriano family and it is headed by Mr. Christopher Lamleo Abrahosa Soriano. So, Initially, we chose small-scale businesses as our setting. However, it has come to us that no one has not no one has yet been using family-owned businesses. So we use family-owned businesses. Uh, actually, we have also another inspiration. It's from the recommendation by the Luay and Jalaga. They recommended that we should try another setting or another context. So we chose job satisfaction and management style, but in the setting of a family-owned business. Nine facets of job satisfaction and management style of comparison was assessed using two instruments. For the job satisfaction, we are we we use a job satisfaction survey by Paul Inspector. While for the management style, we use. Peter G. Northhouse's Conceptualizing Leadership Questionnaire. For the management style, we're, we're going to use the instrument for identification of management ma management style only, not for measuring if how dominant is this management style to the manager. For our rationale of the study, the purpose of this research is to compare the nine facets of job satisfaction of employees and management style of managers in three family-owned businesses. So, why do we want to compare the job satisfaction of each business under different management style? Um, we would like to compare them because we know that management style 
uh, based from previous studies, has a significant effect on job satisfaction. And since our inspiration is from the Luay and Jalagat, uh, saying that we should present this study in another setting, we would like to try if the results are consistent. If we can change the results, if 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 it is really consistent, because actually, uh, from previous results, uh, the result would be there is significant effect or there is significant difference. Why? Because management style really greatly affects influ or influences employee satisfaction. It is a fact. However, will it be the same for a family-owned business? So that is why we formed this rationale. This is why we formed our purpose in this study. So that we would be able to see if the management style really affects significantly to the nine facets of job satisfaction. So far, our statement of the problem, our main problem is how are the nine facets of job satisfaction of employees compared in terms of management style? So that is our main problem. We really want to highlight our two variables, which are nine, jobs, nine facets of job satisfaction and management style. So we would like to answer the questions first what is the profile of the respondents in terms of position and in terms of management style second would be what is the employee's level of satisfaction in terms of the nine facets of job satisfaction third would be which of the nine facets of job satisfaction are employees satisfied the most next would be uh, different which of the nine facets of job satisfaction are employees satisfied the least fifth would be which among the family-owned businesses is satisfied the most and the least and lastly is there a significant difference on the job satisfaction of employees under varied management styles in three family owned businesses so this is why so this is what we are really working for to find out if the results from the existing body of knowledge is consistent or not let's now move on to the next part which is the theoretical framework we actually have four theories in total that will serve as our guiding theories for our research study the first one is the frederick herzberg's Two-factor theory of motivation. This is known as one of the most best um, theory for people management, and this mainly focuses on an individual in a workplace, which first discussed by Frederick Herzberg in his Motivation to Work in 1959. Next, according to Herzberg, there are two factors that can greatly affect the satisfaction of the employees. First is the motivators, and second is the hygiene factors. Next. According to this theory, uh, employees tend to motivate it to work harder when motivators are present, which are the recognition, achievement, the ego, and the social needs. The presence of these factors makes the situation really mot motivating rather, however, the, if the motivator is absent, it does not make any dissatisfaction. This only proves that motivators are really vital to keep the satisfaction level of the employees alongside with their job performance. Well, for the hygiene factors, this can also be compared to the basic needs of an employee's for a company such as company policies, management, working conditions, interpersonal working relationships, 
salaries, benefits, and job safety. If these factors are present, it does not make any satisfaction at all. However, if it is not present, this can cause or this can negatively impact the satisfaction level of the employees which can lead to dissatisfaction. This theory is very vital in our research since the satisfaction level of the employees depends on its facet. It serves as a great factor for the employees in either achieve greater satisfaction or dissatisfaction. Second is Maslow's hierarchy of needs which is another theory widely used to support the job satisfaction. I know some of us are already aware on what Maslow's hierarchy of needs is, but it was first introduced by Maslow in his paper, A Theory of Human Motivation, in 1943. So in this theory, Maslow presented a hierarchy which used in psychological disciplines. Um, however, rather, um, he related the needs not only to the humans generally, but also to the employees. In collaboration with our third theory, which is the Douglas MacGregor's theory X and Y, they both related third theories, stating that the lower needs, which are the physiological needs and safety needs, are for the manager that uses theory X. As far as the physiological needs are concerned, Maslow indicates that managers should give their employees sufficient and reasonable wages for their employees. However, next, as far as the safety needs is concerned, um, managers should provide positive environment and benefits for their employees for them to retain to their job. Since Curie X is someone who decides on his own without any of his subordinates collaboration and hand-in-hand -hand decision making theory x is only focused for the fundamentals of their employees for those theory y manager their priority is the higher needs which are the love and belongingness or also called as social needs and the self-esteem and the self-actualization so for the social needs it is very vital for the manager to concentrate on empowering their staff as well as their top management for them to collaborate and work together as a team. Next. Esteem needs or self-esteem is very important for it is based on accomplishing and rewarding employees. And lastly, for the self-actualization, the manager should always give their employees challenging tasks for them to fully exploit their skills and develop their skills into fullest potential. Curie White Managers is someone who um, let their employees be active in the decision-making process, which stimulates them to become wiser and to feel like they belong. Employees feel that, employees will feel rather, that they have the significant importance in their team and in their position, knowing who they are and what their purpose is. So lastly, and Jury X is guided by the lower needs and Jury Y is guided by the higher needs assumptions. Third, we have the Douglas MacGregor's Jury X and Jury Y. So this is resembling or this mirrors our two management styles present in our study, namely autocratic management style and participative management style. So before we tackle the theories itself, let's first know the proponent of this theory. So Mr. Douglas MacGregor is an American psychologist that developed the theory X and theory Y in his 1960 book, The Human Side of Enterprise. So theory X is resembling an autocratic manager which usually makes his decision on his own and let their employees work as subordinates without any collaboration needed. Next. Theory X managers also claim that employees are not sufficiently motivated and thus it gives, uh, it gives and it needs strict supervision. Next. For the theory why, 
um, theory wise is resembling and participative manager who usually let the employees share their insights, their ideas, as well as their proposals for the team, making sure that collaboration is present to make sound decisions. Next. Theory Y is also known or also called as we approach because the employees and the managers are working together as a team. Thus, these two theory, which is the theory X and theory Y, will serve as theoretical basis for the two out of three management styles present in our study. And lastly, we have the This is Fair Management Style by Kurt Lewin. So in 1930s, together with other researchers, Kurt Lewin identified This is Fair Management Style as one of the three man primary management styles in their study, Leadership and Group Life. Next. A This is Fair Manager is someone who will give the work to the employees and let them handle themselves. He will only join the management when it is under critical st stages. This is fair management is viewed as an act of allowing the employees to handle themselves without any intervention. Although it is not ideal in every case, according to Griffin, given the right circumstances, this is fair management can be an efficient way to manage a team. The four aforementioned theories will serve as theoretical basis to support the variables job satisfaction and management style. Next. And now for the next part, the conceptual framework. We have the IPO, which is the input, process, and output. So first, for the input, we um, included the variables as well as its attributes. First. For the profile of the respondents, we have the position and the management style. For the management style, we have the autocratic management style, participative management style, and laissez fair management style. And lastly, for the job satisfaction, we have the nine facets, pay, promotion, supervision, fringe benefits, contingent rewards, operating procedures, co-workers, nature of work, and communication. Next. A non-experimental comparative study is also utilized as research design in our study. The study respondents are employees and managers of the three family-owned businesses by the Soriano family. Next. We also use two instruments to measure the job satisfaction level of employees and the management styles of the managers, which are the job satisfaction survey and conceptualizing leadership questionnaire. Next. And finally, the descriptive tools we use are frequency and percentage distribution and measures of central tendency in the form of mean scores. And for the inferential tools, we use the ANOVA or one-way analysis of variance. Next. And finally, for our out output, rather, sorry, we have the nine facets of job satisfaction and management style, a comparison. For our hypothesis, our null hypothesis is there is no significant difference in job satisfaction of employees under varied management styles in three family-owned businesses. While for the alternative hypothesis, uh, it's opposite, there is significant difference in job satisfaction of employees under varied management styles in three family-owned businesses. So now we are in our definition of terms. We're going to present first our conceptual definition. Then we're going to present our operational definition. First, job satisfaction. Uh, for job satisfaction, we have three conceptual definitions. First is the pleasurable emotional state that results from an appraisal of one's job. So it's either satisfaction or dissatisfaction. This is according to Hazard, Teo, and Cox, 2018. Next is employee satisfaction, regardless of what their individual key result areas are, is one of the key objectives of all HR personnel. So as I said a while ago, 
uh, it is the main priority of all the companies that employees should be satisfied. This is according to Zarin 2018. Next, job satisfaction is the fulfillment and accomplishment of the relationship of workers with their work responsibilities and work environment. So, job satisfaction is a relationship also because, uh, as I said a while ago as well, employees require fulfilling their needs. And it's like a relationship, employees to needs. So, that is according to Taylor 2019, that job satisfaction is always connected, incorporated to employees since it is needed in their everyday working life. So for our operational definition of our job satisfaction, job satisfaction was measured through the JSS survey, a 36 item with a 9 facet scale. So that 9 facet scale, uh, we have actually 9 facets, pay, promotion, supervision, fringe benefits, contingent rewards, operating procedures, co-workers, nature of work, and communication. Those are 9 that are really essential. Uh, these are specifics that general, that build, that uh, when formed together, uh, they really uh, form job satisfaction as a whole. So, let's talk about the nine facets of job satisfaction. Uh, let's go to the specifics. First, we're going to talk about pay. Pay is defined as an instrument for the advancement of company goals. It is also known as the level of pay and the structure of work. This is all about compensation. So, this is according to NOE. FL 2010. Next, we're going to talk about promotion. It's characterized as a growth to a higher, more difficulty rating. So it's all about uh, positioning, leveling up, or when we level down, it's demoting. So that is all about promotion according to Noe et al. 2010. Next, is supervision. Supervision is characterized as supervisor, which is an act of directing or guiding a person working in an organization. So supervision is all about more about the manager or the management itself. This is according to Noe et al. 2010. Next, let's talk about fringe benefits. Fringe benefits are variations to the compensation provided to its employees by businesses. So these fringe benefits are benefits that are at hand when you enter a workplace. So it's either you have SSS, Peel Health, or it may be uh, about like you have your company car, you will have your laptop. That's all fringe benefits. Fringe benefits refer to the things that are that are with you at hand or it may be insurances or it may be uh, plans that are beneficial to you so this is also rather uh, this is according to Kagan 2019 so next is contingent rewards for our contingent rewards, this is according to Whole Fort et al. 2002. Contingent rewards are described as those provided to perform an activity well or to a level of excellence. So these contingent rewards, when we differentiate it to, uh, when if we compare it to uh, fringe benefits, contingent rewards, these are benefits as well. However, you would be able to get it if you reach the quota or if you did really a, ju a good job uh, contingent rewards are rewards that are somehow to be given if you really show uh, excellence or if you really show your best performance these are rewards that for example you would be able to have extra pay or it would be 
uh, for example, like I said a while ago, you reach the quota, you would be able to uh, to have more commission. This is part of the contingent rewards. Next, operating procedures. Operating procedures or SOPs offer business continuity. Employees, customers, and workplace will change. So it must ensure that a standard set of activities will continue to be carried out while all of these move. So this is according to Childress 2018. Uh, SOPs, these are the daily routines that workers or employees the employees do. So for example, uh, we can relate it to our daily lives. Our main routine in the morning is to brush our teeth, wake up, to, uh, to eat breakfast. That is our daily routine in the morning. So as to comparing it to, uh, to a working lifestyle, it's either, for example, as an accountant, I do some uh, journalizing, I do some transactions, I record, I do disbursements. Uh, that is an example of doing of the SOP. So it's like uh, it's like performing your job description as an employee. Next, so the next facet is the co-workers. Co-workers are defined as people employed in an organization that serves as group support that may affect job satisfaction. So and. And a business uh, does not only require one employee and one manager, it requires more than one. So if they were able to collaborate each other, if they would be able to create a support system, they would really, uh, they would really be satisfied in this facet because uh, they would like to work each other, they would like to share ideas, they would like to uh be the best uh with each other so while working uh co-workers are beneficial so this is a definition according to noe et al 2010. next nature of work nature of work is best defined as a type of work he is doing this can refer to the core daily tasks we perform as a part of a work and can refer to other non-routine tasks that may be performed. So, nature of work, this is similar to the operating procedures. However, nature of work, uh, nature of work is more specific. Uh, for, the, for the operating procedures, I would like to clarify, this is the general task. Well, for the nature of work, this is more of the specific task. So, uh, we can say that for an operating procedure facet, uh, you are an employee. Well, for the nature of work, you are, for example, a bookkeeper or a janitor or a, a sales lady. Uh, it gets to the specifics. Uh, that is the comparison between the two. So this is according to Luis 2019. Next, communication. Communication is the process of sending and receiving messages by verbal or nonverbal means. So this communication is important so that they would be able to have some reciprocation of messages. They would be able to uh, share what should they do and what should they what so what should they reach out so that uh, actually communication is part of the dynamics between the either the employer employee or the manager employee uh, this is part of the dynamic so if communication is absent uh, act, uh, there would be a negative relationship between the two since they are not really uh, sincerely communicating so this is according to Nordquist 2019 next so we're done with the first variable, which is job satisfaction. Let's move on to management style. Specifically, we're going to talk about autocratic management, conceptual first before the operational. Autocratic management 
is a style of management that is characterized by a manager taking control of every decision. So it means that the employees are not part of the decision-making process. That is only the definition of that. So the autocratic manager uh, does everything, does decide everything. Uh, he, he would be able to direct the employees to do something because uh, it's like uh, all the uh, he he has all the ideas. Uh, he has all the right ideas, which is best for the company. So that is one characteristic of an autocratic manager definition by Cherry twenty nineteen. Next, an autocratic manager never makes decision by workers. So managers are often very far from employees. Since there is really no collaboration at all, they only the manager only directs the employees without collaborating or joining the employees in the uh, decision-making process. Uh, auto an autocratic manager uh, is someone who is uh, is someone who is very far from the employees because they are not really talking out their ideas that's why they are very far from each other they're not going beyond to they're not going beyond uh, one idea because when you are an autocratic manager you will only listen to your decision not all not to the decision, not to the ideas of others, not to the recommendations of, other, of others. So that is according to Ekdik Billy Kuchenke and Ekunyenga 2010. Lastly, our autocratic management. This, is impo this imposes autocratic control on an enterprise and is somehow linked to authoritarian management. So when we say authoritarian management, uh, it's all about authority. So when you are authorized, you're, you are authorized to, to, to be responsible of all the workplace, all over the workplace, uh, it means that you're the one who, have, who only has authority. You are, uh, you, are, you are the only one who has the authority. So the employees, they don't have the authority in decision making and collaboration in the, in the business actually. So that is autocratic management for Bowman 20, 2008. So for our operational definition of autocratic management, so for management styles, I said a while ago that I had said a while ago that we use a uh, conceptualizing leadership questionnaire by Peter G. North House in 2018. So, by, by having the amount of employees' responses that are required to be closely supervised, employees are lazy, employees have to be given bon bonuses or punishments, employees feel insecure, manager is the chief judge, and managers give orders. So, Every decision depends on the manager, not on the employees. Next, we're going to talk about the second management style, which is the participative management. So our first conceptual definition, it is a management style in which the manager works closely with team members based on interaction and consistency with the system. So. Participative manager is someone who joins the employees in decision-making process. So they combine ideas, they go beyond to one idea compared to autocratic management. So participative management is requiring collaboration. Collaboration that requires two or more individuals in the workplace. So this is according to Murdoch 2014. Next, 
Participative management is a type of management style in which members of the group play a more participatory role in decision making. So, uh, let's cut it. Uh, participatory role, what do we mean by that? Uh, they would like to for everyone to participate in in the management. So, actually, it's not only in the decision in the decision making process. Uh, participatory role it means that the the employees, the manager, uh, urges the employees to uh, participate not only in sharing ideas but also in. For example, we have team building activities, uh, in team launches. Uh, actually, participative management is all about creating a team. Like there is no need for uh, for superiority. Like yes, they may be uh, able to know who is who is the higher up, who is the subordinate. But for participative management. Uh, they are uh, they are they are knowledgeable that they should be able to uh, to create a solid a solid team so that they would be able to work hand in uh, hand in hand with each other. So this is according to Cherry twenty nineteen as well. So lastly, participative management refers to a highly interactive management style in which employees are motivated and encouraged to attain the aims of the company. So employees are expected to partic participate actively and governance is focused on team building, as I said a while ago, collaboration, consensus, freedom, dedication, and balance. So let's talk about balance. Balance means uh, there is an equal percentage uh, between the manager and the employee. Uh, that is what participative management is all about. It is what participative management is promoting. So participative management is all about the collaboration. And if the manager is free to share his opinions, then so the employees are also free to share his opinions. So their opinions actually. So this is according to Grassmate 2012. So for our operational definition, participative management in the study was defined by the conceptualizing leadership questionnaire. Uh, well, for the employees, they are part of the decision-making process, providing guidance without pressure, rigorous wants, frequent and supportive communication from their managers. Managers need to help subordinates. Manager's job to help subordinates fund their, pas their passion and people are basically competent. So there is no belittling employees here. Uh, participative management is all about uh, equality and if the manager can do that job, it says that the employee can do the job as well. So there is no belittling here. There is no uh, condescending moments that the party that the participative manager uh, promotes. So for our last management style, uh, we tackled autocratic, participative, and the third is laissez fair management style. Laissez fair management style have three conceptual definitions as well as as well as one operational definition. This is fair management. So, it this is fair actually is a French term generally mean as leave alone or let do. So this is the uh, this is the uh, opposite of autocratic management. When an autocrat when a this is fair when when while in uh, for autocratic management, uh, the leader or the manager is the only one who is uh, who is uh, who is deciding for the for the workplace, while the employees have no voice. For the laissez fair, it's different. 
for the manager, uh, he will let do or live alone the employees in doing their job. So uh, the manager would be only giving the job description, but for the employees, it depends on them on how they will work, on how they can, on how can, can they can improve the workplace, on how can they achieve business success. It depends on the employees. That is the latest fair management. So it is according to Jean, twenty nineteen. Second definition. It is a standalone strategy that varied from the X theory to the Y theory. So X theory is autocratic, Y theory is participative. So this is uh, the opposite of X theory. This expert does not regulate and instruct workers, while theory X and theory Y both revolve around the leader. So this is this expert is labeled as a non-leader since uh, it. It actually doesn't require a manager. Employees are the only ones who are uh, doing all the job. They are uh, the manager is actually dependent to the employees because the manager is not really uh, doing an active role in the workplace. That is the latest fair management according to North House twenty eighteen. Next. Laissez fair is a management style that gives little or no direction to employees. Leaders mostly expect employees to understand the tasks that need to be done, and they are expected to make decisions on their own, leaving them with responsibilities. So this is also uh, similar to the aforementioned definitions that I told a while ago. So it's actually uh, maybe uh, it's actually uh, the manager really does not do his job uh, it's uh, it depends on the employees if they would be if they would be doing their best if they would be not doing their best because they really don't have a manager so that is according to borrow and Kindle 2013 okay so for our operational definition place as fair management as well is assessed through conceptualizing leadership questionnaire by peter g nordhouse so managers should let their subordinates work their own problems managers should give their subordinates independence to their own job managers only exert minimal influence on employees because actually laissez fair managers are not really there uh they are they are not really active in managing the employees that's why the employees get to be independent on what they want to do and what and how they would be able to handle the problems the challenges that are uh, present in the workplace so that is the last management style for the variable management style so for the next part it's the significance of the study this study will give benefit to the following first is for the employees second is for the managers and third is for the future researchers so first for the employees the results of the study will help them understand the numerous nine facets of job satisfaction and how it can really affect or contribute to their satisfaction level. Next. For the managers, this study will help them to deal more effectively with situations and help them to establish relationship with their employees. This will also help them to decide on which of the following nine facets of job satisfaction they should concentrate on and as well as the what management style they should adopt. Next. And finally, for the future researchers, this study will be or will serve as their background information will give them sufficient data of the nine facets 
of job satisfaction as well as regarding to the comparisons of nine facets of job satisfaction and employees of family-owned businesses. It can also act as reference point for the forthcoming study they will be carrying out. So for our scope, the scope of this study is to compare the job satisfaction of employees and managers' management styles in three family-owned businesses. So, um, as I said a while ago, our two variables are job satisfaction and management style. Our independent variable is uh, management style and our dependent variable is job satisfaction. So, the three family-owned businesses owned by the Seriana family are Cafe Salvara, Salvara Spa, and Skill Provider Technological Institute Incorporation. So, so, for our delimitation, the study will be delimited to the nine facets of job satisfaction. I already discussed it a while ago in the definition of terms, but let's repeat it. Pay, promotion, supervision, fringe benefits, contingent rewards, operating procedures, nature of work, co-workers, and communication. For the management style, we have three. So, the management, there are a lot of management styles, but we delimited only to we delimited it only to three, which are autocratic, participative, and laissez fair management styles. So the businesses, uh, there are a lot of businesses, but we only delimited it to three family-owned businesses owned by Sargano family. Uh, these are Silvara Spa, Cafe Silvara, and Skill Provider Technological Institute Incorporation. Then, so these businesses are the only uh, in are the only participants or the respondents in the study. I am Emilio Soriano, going to present our chapter three, methods and procedure. This chapter explained how the research design and the study respondents are identified. The study instruments and the data collection methods, along with the statistical treatment that the researchers will use to obtain precise and reliable data analysis and interpretations. And for our research design, we use a comparative study to compare the job satisfaction of employees in three family-owned businesses. We use a descriptive survey approach with the aid of printed questionnaires to define the worker's job satisfaction precisely and to assess the supervisor's manager style of management. The process used in this study is designed to gather data on current conditions in the locality of the study which is concerned primarily with job satisfaction. And for our respondents of the study, the target respondents of the study were managers and employees who are currently working with one family in Bukawe, Bulacan. The family-owned businesses are Cafe Silvara, Silvara Spa, and Skills Provider Technological Institute. The respondents of the study were determined by pre-survey to be conducted by researchers who would hand over the business's workforce asking whether they were a manager or an employee. The number of employees obtained is the sample of the study. All workers receive a questionnaire to evaluate their satisfaction with their job in order to acquire accurate data. And for our sampling technique, we have two questionnaires, one for our job satisfaction and one for our management style. For our job satisfaction, we have our JSS or our Job Satisfaction Survey Questionnaire which was developed by Paul E. Spector in 1994. And for our, jo and for our management styles, we have Peter G. Northhouse's Conceptualizing Leadership Questionnaire in 2019. For our job satisfaction data, will be collected using the six-point Likert scale to measure the job satisfaction of studies respondents, specifically employees, while our management style is not necessary because it is only used for identification on which management style was used by managers. And we have one being the high, lowest, or rather lowest, and six being the highest for one being the lowest, we have extremely dissatisfied, and six being our highest, extremely satisfied. 
and for our data gathering procedure, the data was collected from the employees and managers of the three family-owned businesses. After us sending a letter of request to Mr. Christopher Limneo Abracosa Soriano, business owner and the head of the Soriano family, for us in order to join the business in the study, the initial copies of the instruments were also given to Mr. Soriano for further assessments and questions. After the permission was granted by the owner, the researchers asked the exact figures of who in the workforce are classified as employees and managers. With the population at hand, the, no the total number of employees and managers are the respondents of the study who are tasked to answer the questionnaires regarding job satisfaction for employees and minor focus on management style for managers. Statistical analysis, descriptive statistics. Frequency and percentage distribution tables were used to tabulate and tally the data collected as well as to determine the ratio of frequency to the total number of respondents in percentage form to be utilized for further computations in response to the problem statement. Measures of central tendency in the form of mean scores functioned as the foundation in measuring the nine facets of job satisfaction, namely pay, promotion, supervision, fringe benefits, and contingent rewards, operating procedures, co-workers, nature of work, and communication, as well as measuring the comparison of overall job satisfaction level scores of employees in three family-owned enterprises. For our inferential statistics, we use ANOVA or one-way analysis of variance, was utilized to determine if there is a significant difference between the weighted mean of job satisfaction of three family-owned businesses. ANOVA helped in testing whether the null hypothesis there is no significant difference in job satisfaction of employees under varied management styles in three family-owned businesses or alternative hypothesis there is significant difference in job satisfaction of employees under varied management styles in the three family owned businesses is accepted. In the next chapter, which is chapter 5, we will discuss first summary of findings in reference to the general problem. For the first specific problem, what is the profile of the respondents in terms of position and management style? For the profile of the respondents in terms of position, the presentation shows that there are a total of 43 respondents from Cafe Silvara, Silvara Spa, and Skill Provider Technological Institute, in which roles are divided into managers and employees. Each business is led by one manager, representing that there are 3 out of 43 respondents from the survey and 40 out of 43 respondents representing the employees. And for the next one, the profile of the respondents in terms of management styles, there are primarily 3 styles in terms of management styles. There are autocratic, participative, and lazy sphere. Silvara Spa is managed by an autocratic manager who handles 11 employees Skill Provider Technological Institute is supervised by a manager who uses a combination of autocratic, participative management styles that manages 13 employees. And Cafe Silvara has a participative manager and handles 16 employees. So for the second specific problem, what is the employee's level of satisfaction within the nine facets of job satisfaction? So first, for the Silvara Spa, the findings reveals that, in terms of job satisfaction of Silvara Spa based on the nine facets, facet supervision ranked first with a weighted mean of 4.32, followed by nature of work ranked as second with a weighted mean of 4, and followed by promotion ranked third with a weighted mean of 3.98, and followed by co-workers ranked fourth with a weighted mean of 3.95 and followed by pay and communication rank as 5.5 with both has a weighted mean of 
and followed by fringe benefits ranked as 7 with a weighted mean of 3.45 and followed by operating conditions ranked as 8 with a weighted mean of 3.34 and lastly contingent rewards ranked as 9 with a weighted mean of 3.32 and it has a overall mean of 3.77. So for the skill provider, technological institute, incorporation, the findings revealed that in terms of job satisfaction of skill provider, technological institute, incorporation, the facet co-workers ranked first with a weighted mean of 4.83, followed by nature of work ranked second with a weighted mean of 4.67, and followed by supervision ranked third with a weighted mean of 4.56, and followed by pay, ranked as fourth, with a weighted mean of 4.10, and followed by communication, with rank fifth, with a weighted mean of four, and followed by contingent rewards, with a weighted mean of 3.90, ranked as sixth, and followed by fringe benefits, ranked as seven, with a weighted mean of 3.88, and followed by promotion, ranked as eight with a weighted mean of 3.65 and lastly, operating conditions rank as 9 with a weighted mean of 2.87 with the overall mean of 4.05 and lastly, for Capi Silvara, the findings reveal that in terms of job satisfaction of Capi Silvara, based on its 9 facets the facet, co-workers ranks first with a weighted mean of 4.92 and followed by nature of work with a weighted mean of 4.81 ranked as second and followed by supervision ranked third with a weighted mean of 4.53 and followed by communication ranked fourth with a weighted mean of 4.50 and followed by promotion ranked fifth with a weighted mean of 3.89 and followed by pay ranked as six with a weighted mean of 3.86 and followed by fringe benefits ranked as 7 with a weighted mean of 3.78 and followed by contingent rewards ranked as 8 with a weighted mean of 3.73 and lastly operating conditions ranked as 9 with a weighted mean of 3.41 and thus the overall mean of 4.16 The third specific problem which of the nine facets of job satisfaction are employees the most satisfied with? So, for the Silvara Spa, the facet which the Silvara Spa employees are the most satisfied with, the facet supervision, with a weighted mean score of 4.32. And for the Skill Provider Technological Institute, the facet wherein the employees of the Skill Provider Technological Institute are the most satisfied. The facet co-worker with a weighted mean of 4.83. And lastly, the Cafe Silvara. The facet which the Cafe Silvara are the most satisfied, the facet co-worker with a weighted mean score of 4.92. For the fourth specific problem, which of the nine facets of job satisfaction are employees the least satisfied with? For the Silvara Spa, the facet wherein employees of Silvara Spa are least satisfied with is the facet contingent rewards, with a weighted mean score of 3.32. Here, it shows that contingent rewards are ranked as 9 and thus a weighted mean of 3.32 and thus a ver verbal interpretation of somewhat dissatisfied. So for the skill provider, Technological Institute Incorporation, the facet wherein employees of skill provider, Technological Institute Incorporation are least satisfied with the facet operating conditions with a weighted mean score of 2.87. Here, it shows that operating conditions has the lowest weighted mean, which is 2.87 and ranked as 9 and as a verbal interpretation of somewhat dissatisfied. And lastly, for Cafe Silvara, the facet wherein the employees of Cafe Silvara are least satisfied with is the facet operating conditions, 
with a weighted mean score of 3.41. Here, in this table, it shows that operating conditions has the lowest weighted mean score of 3.41 and drunk as 9 with a verbal interpretation of somewhat dissatisfied. Fifth specific problem, which among the family-owned businesses is satisfied the most and the least in terms of job satisfaction? Among the three family-owned businesses, Cafe Silvara is the most satisfied while Silvara Spa is the least satisfied in terms of job satisfaction. In comparing their grand mean or their overall job satisfaction level, Silvara Spa is the least satisfied with 3.77 followed by the Skill Provider Technological Institute with 4.05, while Cafe Silvara is revealed as the most satisfied with 4.16. The grand mean was computed through adding all the weighted mean in each facet, then dividing it all by 9. So for the six specific problem, is there a significant difference on the job satisfaction of employees under varied management styles in three family-owned businesses. So, in testing the hypothesis of the study, the researchers used one-way ANOVA as inferential statistical tool. It shows the results that the F value, which has a value of 1.456195, is less than the F critical value, which has a value of 3.402826. And therefore, the null hypothesis is accepted, which states that there is no significant difference in job satisfaction of employees under varied management styles in three family-owned businesses. And so that the alternative hypothesis is rejected, which states that there is significant difference in job satisfaction of employees under varied management style in three family-owned businesses. So this table proves that the F value is lower than the F critical value. That's why the alternative hypothesis is rejected and the null hypothesis is accepted. And now we're down to the next part which is the conclusions of the study. For our first conclusions, Cafe Salvar employees who are under participative management style are most satisfied based on job satisfaction level, followed by Skill Provider Technological Institute Incorporation, employees who are under autocratic participative management style, and Salvara Spy employees who are under autocratic management style are least satisfied in terms of their job. So, next. This was supported by the following study. So the first one is according to COWO 2018. Participative management shows that the majority of employees in the company studied actually embrace and practice the concept in order to achieve good working relations and set goals. So as I have explained earlier in the theoretical framework, participative managers are is someone who let their employees share their insights, share their ideas, as well as their proposals to their team. So this setup will really be a good way for the employees to enjoy their work, for them to achieve their goals, as for them, as well as for them to be productive in their work. Next. Aside from that, according to the findings of John in 2019, in his study entitled, Participative leadership and job satisfaction, the mediating role of work management and the moderating role of fun experience at work. Participative management was positively correlated with employees' work engagement and job satisfaction. The positive relationship between participative management style and job satisfaction when employees had more fun and happiness at work was stronger. So this means that having a participative manager will help or will allow the employees to, to grow as well as to enjoy their job. It will also help the employees to exploit their skills into their fullest potentials and will also help not only the employees but also the managers for them to have a collaborative and um, for them to grow their relationship much stronger that would benefit the company. And lastly, 
in view of globalization, employees who are now becoming more educated, autonomous, and professional may no longer accept autocratic management style. More significantly, under autocratic management, there is no mentorship mechanism. The autocratic management demonstrates a significant negative impact on employee performance. This management style tended to have less productive working groups and subordinates show a high degree of frustration at the job. This was um, this is a study by Dali and Nanyalong 2018. So as I have explained to earlier, having an autocratic manager will really just allow the employees to be feel that they were frustrated for their job um, because um, they will not let or they will not grow if their um, managers will not allow them to share their insights and their opinions. This um, study will conclude and will support uh, our first conclusion because our first conclusion was the Silvara Spa, which was managed by autocratic management style, is the least in terms of job satisfaction. Our conclusion to among the nine facets of job satisfaction, Cafe Silvara employees are most satisfied with co-workers, Silvara Spa employees with supervision, and Skill Provider Technological Institute in cooperation with co-workers. So, uh, we defined it a while ago that co-workers are described as workers in an organization that serves as group support that can affect job satisfaction. This is according to Noe et al. 2010. According to Bold and Barrett 2019, relationships with co-workers are a leading contributor to employees' well-being. Why? Because employees are always with their co-employees in the workplace. So it is a living contributor to the employees. So because of them working hand in hand, uh, they support each other, they contribute to each other, they influence each other. So thus allowing employees to form friendships at work can go a long way in helping them feel more involved at work. So camaraderie can also help employees to be satisfied with their jobs so uh it's all about positive influences it's all about employee relationships and if there is a toxic relationship between one employee to another uh it can cause dissatisfaction so uh it's a great thing that uh the businesses consider co-workers so that uh they would be able to have employees that are satisfied, that are more satisfied than the normal level. This is according to Bolden Barrett 2019. So, for the Selvara Spa, uh, they are most satisfied with the facet supervision. So, this is described as the act of directing or guiding a person. So it's all about management, it's all about the manager. That is according to Noe et al. 2010. So uh, supervision, according to the study of Qureshi and Hamid 2017, refers to the supervisor behavior which helps the employees to demonstrate the skills, knowledge, and attitudes collected from the training program. So to supervision, it's not all about directing it's not all about guiding actually it's about uh, uh practicality uh it's about uh applying the skills the knowledge that the manager can impart to his employees so that is why uh for silbara spa supervision is actually the uh, facet where they are most satisfied with because uh they can apply what they train for they train for massage they train for uh personal care and since they are able to apply personal care it means that the facet supervision is working well that is why supervision
for Silvara spy employees is very uh, exemplary. That is according to Bald and Barrett 2019. So in the aforementioned study, it reveals that job satisfaction can be effectively improved by offering attentive supervision support. Furthermore, the view of employees as to the work being just and fair can further improve their job satisfaction through supervision. So, supervision is really important. It's significant to the workplace. If there is no supervision uh, for the employees, uh, the employees might do something wrong and they may not be able to apply the practicalities correctly. And if not, it can uh, it can negatively affect the company because they are not able to give what is best. They were not able. They would not be able to uh, to be guided. They would not be able to be corrected. That is why supervision is really significant for the employees. Conclusion three: Operating conditions offer continuity of business. Employees, customers, and places of work are going to change. Standard operating procedures must ensure that during all these movements, a standard set of activities will continue to be performed. In addition to their study, improving working conditions include ensuring health at work, educating staff regulating and upgrading machinery and instruments, and providing adequate protective equipment. According to Holford et al. 2002, contingent rewards are described as the provided to perform an activity well or to a level of excellence. So in conclusion number four, it states that Cafe Silvara is the most satisfied in terms of job satisfaction because according to the research of Juaria in Sakchan 2018, restaurant and cafe employees love their job because it was interesting and it gives them opportunities for advancement. In addition, it can be said that in cafe employees, the condition of motivators was higher than the factors of hygiene. The most significant motivators that respondent listed were the success they had when working in this business. They also mentioned that it was interesting to work and have a job in this sector. This comment demonstrates that it is interesting to work as a cafe employees. So here, this research, is, it states that being a cafe employees is interesting and also it states that cafe employees love their job because it gives them the opportunities for advancement. For our conclusion number five, Silvara Spa is the least dominant in terms of job satisfaction. Next. So, according to Sudley Kuhn Chang and Bixler in 2018, the results of the study shed light on key factors that inspire Thai spa therapists contributing to their overall satisfaction at work. These factors include good open relationships in the workplace, tangible benefits, deeply rewarding career, by a financial well-being, participating in the process of this spa growth, and contradictory job perspective. Next, perception rather. So from um, the results above, it states that or it shows that culture really plays an important role for the Thai spa therapist. Therefore, the findings of this study indicate that spa employees in Thailand and not only in Thailand but also in other countries should be aware of the need to establish or provide great relationship with their spa therapist and provide them with opportunities to participate in the process of spa development in order to improve job satisfaction and work performance. So this only proves that some of the spa therapists, spa agents, uh, not just here in the Philippines, not just in Silvara Spa, but also in the other country, really needs attention and really needs to and the managers of the spa therapists really needs to provide them um, satisfaction, benefits that will satisfy um, the spa therapist. So, for our conclusion 6, 
there is no significant difference in job satisfaction of employees under varied management styles in three family-owned businesses. So as you can see, uh, we accepted the null hypothesis and rejected the alternative hypothesis because uh, it, there is no significant difference. So according to the research by Amalaya and Agila 2012, there was no significant relationship between job satisfaction and autocratic and participative management styles. There was also no significant difference between job satisfaction and the styles described above. So uh, actually, uh, this study by Amalaya and Agila from 2012 is the only study that we found that can support our study. Well, for the succeeding studies after that, uh, it's, it, it reveals that there is significant difference, there is significant relationship. So, it, and it, the, uh, the, there is no significant difference ended in 2012. Uh, the, from, uh, after those studies, it showed that management style has a significant relationship or difference or effect to uh, to job satisfaction and that is why we are proud of having this research uh, we achieved that our one of our goals one of our inspirations that if uh, if uh, if this is consistent if this is not we would like to add this to the existing body of knowledge that uh, there there might be uh, there might be uh, inconsistency. It depend it may be depend dependent to the setting. It may be dependent to the context as uh, supported by the Luay and Jalagat. Uh, so uh, we're happy that our results became a contradictory uh, result to the previous researches. So, uh, another study, uh, well, this study is what I am saying. Uh, it presented that there is significant difference or the study is not parallel to the findings of Massa de Grad and Ferdosi 2013, which resulted that there was a statistically significant correlation between the job satisfaction of employees and the management style of managers. So it uh, distorted the con the continuous uh, accept uh, continuous acceptance of the alternative hypothesis, and we presented that there is no significant difference. So, based on the findings of the Luay and Jalaga 2016, management styles have a significant impact on job satisfaction and job performance. Nevertheless, they acknowledge that further research shall be carried out in relation to the effect of management styles on different settings and contexts. So, this is our main inspiration that we would like to prove if uh, we would like to determine if this is consistent or not. So, uh, gladly, we presented a study that says uh, there is no significant difference because we use another setting. We use family-owned businesses. So, that is our conclusion 6, uh, presenting that there is no significant difference. So next, for our recommendations, we, the researchers, recommend the following steps based on our studies findings and conclusions. So first, for the workforce, employees should be wise in finding a company that will give them or that will benefit them from their needs. Aside from that, they should also talk it out with their managers if they feel that they are not compensated well for their efforts. And lastly, the employees should know their managers well so that they can adjust to the type of management style that their manager uses. Next, um, for the managers, managers should be able 
to adopt the best management style suited to their nature of work since their primary concern is the welfare of their employees, which can lead to better results of the company or business dynamics. Having and knowing the management styles of the manager will greatly affect the company in terms of their sales, productivity, and the employee, the employee satisfaction. Managers should be consistent in taking actions regarding their employee satisfaction level, considering that they are the ones who are responsible in taking maneuver with their subordinates. So, recommendations for the future researchers? A follow-up study can be carried out at a different level by increasing the number of respondents. Uh, we think that 43 respondents is a good number, but if it is increased, maybe there would be changes in the results. Uh, involving demographic pro profiles for the respondents, uh, I think, uh, we think that uh, our profiles are limited, which is the position and the management style. We may, the future researchers may add age, gender, but be, uh, the reason why we don't we didn't add those demographic profiles because it is not in our area of interest. Uh, changing the type of business uh, because our businesses are more of service type. Uh, it may be uh, industrial, it may be manufacturing. Ma manufacturing. Uh, it depends on the future researchers on what type of business you would you like to take a take a study on? Uh, using a different type of job satisfaction scale. Uh, there are many types of job satisfaction scales. Uh, it is not only limited to the nine facets, uh, but because it's in our delimitation, uh, we use the nine facets. Uh, you may use the different questionnaires about job satisfaction. It may be from Minnesota job satisfaction questionnaire, etc. and the like. Next, using different kinds of questionnaires, as I said a while ago, there are many questionnaires. Uh, the choices are really uh, large, so maybe it may work for you. Next, and using different kinds of setting and context. So we would like to relay the recommendation we would like to continue uh, recommending the recommendation from the Luway and Janagat because uh, it worked for us to present a contradictory research. So uh, our results may continue if we use if the future researchers use a different setting or a different context. So. Uh, that is uh, our main, main main recommendation for the future researchers. So another follow-up study recommended to the future researchers uh, may be conducted by extending the study involving the individuality of the nine facets comparing in different management styles. So uh, our focus was uh, overall job satisfaction uh, when we say individuality of the nine facets, uh, you would do more RRL, RRS, literature studies regarding the facets. Uh, you will find more uh, studies, mo find more so that uh, the facets can be more highlighted, can be more uh, size. So that is why we would like to uh, to extend to the future researchers if you would like to have uh, research, uh, it may be extending our study, finding some the, so finding the individuality of each facet. And lastly, uh, a follow-up study may be conducted by comparing the job satisfaction of employees of those under family-owned businesses and those who are not. So, uh, this is another type of study that if we are going to pursue our research more, uh, this is another step. 
uh, because uh, we are not sure if it's because of the family owned businesses that's why it's we accepted our null hypothesis so that is why we would like to have the future researchers a follow-up study comparing the job satisfaction of family-owned businesses and non-family-owned businesses if there is really a significant difference. Before we end this presentation, on behalf of Group 7, I, Sandra Colleen, and Prefina would like to extend our deepest gratitude to firstly to God who never fails to support us in every step that we took up to this moment. Secondly, to Dr. Marilu Elderman, who never gave up on us alongside the 27 groups. Thank you, Mom, for your utmost care and perseverance, as well as finding ways for us to present our research such as this platform. Thirdly, thank you for our parents, who are very understanding to the situation we are in. Even though weekends are sacrificed, which supposed to be our family days would always be there to support us. Fourthly, to our ABM, um, we had finally reached its end and we hope that this will serve as one of the many memories we were able to share together. Thank you for your moral and academic support that we had achieved in meeting you all. And lastly, to ourselves, Yours truly, Simon, Robert, Reggie, and Emilio, we had reached this far and all hats off with each and every one of us. It may be our last house raid or it may be our last revisions. It would never be the last meeting and bonding that we will have. Thank you for all the memories we've spent together. Thank you for all the sleepless nights We've encountered and mahal ko lahat. Our study, Nine Facets of Job Satisfaction and Management Style, a comparison, is finished with its presentation. Thank you and God bless us all.